When Apple introduced HomeKit Secure Video and HomeKit Doorbells, it all seemed like the ideal Apple Home product. By installing a HomeKit Secure Video Doorbell, you get notifications on all your Apple devices, including Apple TV when someone rings the doorbell. You also get easy access to video clip recordings of customized events like people or package deliveries stored in iCloud right from inside the Home app. All the video is processed by your local network HomeKit hubs, and you get face to detection included based on your iCloud photo library faces. But Apple doesn't make doorbells and other companies have struggled to make good options. Logitech's Circle View doorbell looked great at first, but it overheats in direct sunlight and super warm weather. Belkin Wemo tried next and while their doorbell doesn't overheat, it has connection issues with Wi-Fi in certain circumstances. Both these options also have zero support for other smart home ecosystems and don't allow for continuous video recording. So can Akara solve these problems with their new G4 smart video doorbell and be the one you should put on your front door. My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel all about building an effective Apple smart home. The Akara G4 doorbell is part of Akara's G4 camera line. It was announced at CES this year. Akara is now shipping the North American version here in the US and I've had over a month of early access compliments of Akara to test it out and let you know all about the details. But this is my honest opinion and Akara has no input on the production of this video. In the box you get the doorbell of course and my first impression was that it's it's not that heavy without batteries, but man, is it thin and wide. It's about twice as wide as most doorbells. And there's also a chime box. This serves as the connection between the doorbell and the rest of your smart home. They've included a USB-A to USB-C cable to power the chime box, but you need to supply your own USB-A power adapter or use another means of getting USB-C charging for the chime box. There are mounting plates, screws, and a screwdriver for securing the doorbell, and you can also use adhesive if you can't use screws, which is convenient. You can power the doorbell with a wired connection from an existing wired doorbell, but you can alternatively use six AA batteries. Now, since my unit was pre-production flown over from China, I didn't have AA batteries in my box, but I didn't need them. You should have batteries included in your box though. In the manual, a car recommends starting insulation by putting the doorbell on the door. If you can put the batteries in the doorbell, you should start by adding the doorbell to your smart home first, in my opinion. This way you know if it works on your Wi-Fi before tearing out your existing doorbell and drilling holes in your door frame. Now, between other smart home tech and my children's toys, I hated the idea of having yet another thing to use traditional AA batteries. So I didn't follow my own advice and I just went ahead with the insulation on my door. I wish there was another way to power the doorbell like a USB port. If you are hardwiring the doorbell, a car wants you to punch out a pre-cut hole in the back of the doorbell mount. This is very easy. Speaking of mounting, I highly recommend using the included angle mounting plate. It's reversible depending on which direction you want the camera angled and angling gives you a better view of people at your door. For wiring the doorbell, shut off the power to the breaker, remove your old doorbell and drill the holes for the car mount. Once the mount is secure, attach the doorbell wires the Akara doorbell. This is very easy and similar to lots of other electrical items with standard screw attachments for the wires to wrap around. If you haven't done any smart home electrical projects and you have a doorbell that's powered in a North American home built in the last 30 to 40 years, doorbells are an easy electrical installation. But if you want assistance, wiring this doorbell is really no different from a standard doorbell. So you could hire someone to do that and then you can add it to your smart home. The doorbell requires 12 to 24 volt AC or 8 to 24 volt DC power if you're wiring it. For battery power, a car rates the six AA batteries to last three to four months with 30 detections per day. You can tweak activity zones for where it detects those activities to leave out busy roads in front of your home and signal strength to the chime box might also play a role in the battery life. I'm concerned about the battery life with temperature in really hot climates, but that's just not where I live. I wired mine and left the battery slots empty and it works fine. Personally, I find 
designed the AA battery choice for power to be very odd. I'm guessing it was made to keep costs down. I would way rather have a well insulated lithium ion battery inside the doorbell. Usually at this point, we talk about integrating the doorbell with a non-smart home chime that often gives the typical doorbell ding dong sound. This one doesn't have an integration with a home chime. Instead, Akara has offloaded some of the doorbell computing to the chime box. For placing the chime box, you'll need it to be plugged in and inside your home near your doorbell. Akara recommends you place it within five meters or about 16 feet of your doorbell horizontally. This means in my experience, being higher or lower than the doorbell has less of a problem. I confirmed with Akara that the communication here is by a wireless 2.4 gigahertz LAN between the chime and the doorbell. I'm guessing the close distance requirement is due to the limited power for the wireless radio. For many doorbells, you add it to your smart home at the doorbell. With the Akara G4 doorbell, this process happens at the chime box. Installing this doorbell in cold weather, I was very thankful the process was inside and not out by the doorbell. Adding the doorbell to your home technically works through just Apple HomeKit without the Akara app, but you'll want the Akara app on this one. Since I got this doorbell, Akara has been hard at work updating the software with bug fixes, and you'll need the Akara app to update your doorbells firmware. You also get access to some more of the advanced settings and features like continuous video recording. The doorbell and chime support 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi only, not 5 gigahertz or 6 gigahertz. If you have separate 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks in your home, be sure to switch your phone to the 2.4 gigahertz network before setting up the doorbell. The Cars app also has lots of options for local AI, face identification, and more automation. I don't use any of that at all. I use the Akara app for setting up my Akara devices and updating the software. Otherwise, I'm 100% in Apple's home app. Notifications from the Akara app for doorbell events are on by default and come slightly faster than the home app in my experience. But I wanted to turn them off because the home app notifications include images of the recorded event from iCloud. To turn off doorbell notifications in the Akara app, you actually have to turn them off in two different places. I'll leave details of the steps in the description description below the like button if you're curious. One nice option you can turn on in the Akara app is adding the date and timestamps to videos. Many HomeKit cameras don't offer this. I imagine this would be helpful if you ever had to use the video as evidence for a crime, but thankfully, I have no idea about that. The doorbell also has an infrared sensor on it working as a motion sensor in HomeKit. This is nice if you want to turn your front lights on based on motion. Personally, I just have my lights come on at night on a schedule in HomeKit. If you want to get this doorbell working with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant, you'll also want to do that in the Akara app, but I don't care about that, so we will skip right over it today. The app rates the signal quality of the doorbell to chime communication on five levels, strong, relatively strong, medium, weaker, and weak. Akara says a better signal between the box and the doorbell will result in better voice and video intercom experience. Get off my lawn. If you aren't familiar with HomeKit Secure Video, you can talk through your phone in the Home app and have a conversation with someone at your front door from wherever you are in the world. This is pretty much table stakes for any smart doorbell these days, but it is a useful feature. I put my chime box on top of a cabinet right next to my Ring security system. Well, there's a lot of other wireless signal going on here. I have it right inside my home from my doorbell and the software rates the signal at quote medium for what it's worth. But then I also move my chime box to our kitchen to test it, which is just outside 16 feet and the signal is still rated at medium. I don't have a very big house, but trying this in a number of other locations, including my basement, I couldn't get the signal to drop below medium, even when over 16 feet away. If you don't have things known for Wi-Fi interference, like a microwave in between the chime box and the doorbell, you should be able to stretch this distance a little further than 16 feet. Just keep an eye under the dot 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 button and then the more settings in the Akara app to see how your signal quality is doing. In order to replace your home's doorbell chime, the chime box needs to make a doorbell sound. And the speaker on the chime box is 95 decibels and can be heard through my house just as well as any standard chime. <laughs> And 
one other thing, thing to mention is that you can actually change the ringtone that the Akara Chime makes. You have choices between this default ringtone, you can choose ringtone two, or ringtone three. Not to mention, thanks to HomeKit, the doorbell chime can optionally ring on any of your HomePods or HomePod minis. There's also an included micro SD card slot on the chime box where you can add a card to locally store continuous video recordings. More on that in a minute. With the flexibility of batteries and no wired chime required, you could put this, quote, doorbell in more than the usual locations. I could see this working well in certain apartments, private offices, or also gates to a home. Now, how do you keep the bad guys from grabbing your new doorbell right off your front door? There's a covered screw on the side to secure the doorbell to the mount. Once your doorbell is installed, you can also optionally turn on a tamper mode in the Akara app, which will sound an alarm if the doorbell detects some Someone is trying to move it. Every smart doorbell, in my opinion, has a weird button to ring the doorbell. This one is no exception. Pressing the button feels fine. My gripe is that none of the smart doorbell buttons look like something you should press. The usability here is important for your visitors, not for you. The Belkin Wemo doorbell still takes the prize for the best button on a HomeKit doorbell, but it still doesn't win in all the other categories in my book. The Akara button shines a white ring around it when you're near it at night, and then it changes to red when it's recording a video. The first time I saw this, I thought something was wrong with the doorbell. The red ring of death, anyone? The doorbell is rated to work down to minus 0.4 degrees Fahrenheit, but mine continued to work down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. At other points in mild weather though, I had some issues with my doorbell going offline. I reported these to Akara and it seems a fix the issues in recent software updates. One of my big complaints about HomeKit Secure Video is that there's no continuous video recording in HomeKit. And then in turn, many HomeKit cameras don't offer that as an option. As I mentioned, you can add your own micro SD card to the Akara Chime box to get continuous video recording on this doorbell. Scrubbing through the footage in the Akara app can be slow to stream to your device, even when you're on your home network. You can though stream the recordings also when you're away from home if needed. You can remove the SD card with a paper clip and read the files straight on any computer with files and folders. The continuous video recording though does stop of course when the card is out of the chime box. The software will automatically delete older footage once your card is full. In my experience it's about 16 gigabytes for a full day of recording. Folders are done by date, then by hour, and then broken into 60 one minute video clips. For video quality, the clips have good dynamic range with deep blacks during the day, but at night it's all black and white and the quality is just okay with a lot of noise in the shadows. It's definitely not as good as the Logitech Circle View doorbell's color night vision. Given the focus on HomeKit Secure Video, the video quality is only 1080p resolution since that's what HomeKit supports. The bigger problem though is that it shows 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The 162 degree wide angle view from the camera gives me a nice view of even my doorknob on my storm door, but they really should have gone with three by two aspect ratio or better yet, a portrait two by three or nine by 16. So then you get a better view of things like packages at the front door. I think the Akara doorbell is the one most people will actually buy. Given that Akara has a global presence, I bet various versions of this doorbell will make it to many more countries than the Logitech and Belkin models. I also hear so many people complain they don't have proper wiring for a smart doorbell. Now you have a battery option where you can complain to me about the AA batteries instead. It's also the most affordable HomeKit doorbell so far and it has the option option for 24 seven recording. If you want a thinner doorbell profile, integration with a chime, better quality video at night, a doorbell that doesn't use yet another third party app and account, check out my video comparing the Logitech Circle View and Belkin Wemo doorbells last year because unfortunately there still isn't a clear answer of a good default HomeKit doorbell option for everybody. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.